Welcome back, friends, to Reverb 2024, day two. I'm sitting here with Secondhand Serenade. What's going on? Dude, what up, what how up? was your set? You guys had a little technical difficulties, but it, it sounded great. awesome. Yeah, that kind of stuff happens, you know? Like, yeah. you know, something goes down, especially with, like, festivals, because the changeover is always, like, you don't get, like, the sound checks. You just get the line checks, so... You got a you got a short amount of time to get everything done, and whatever you don't finish, you're basically screwed. So. Yeah, for sure. But if you're gonna have issues as far as like everybody else, at least it's just the duo. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You guys can yeah. really you play a lot of acoustics. Yeah, so. I mean, but yeah, we, we we ended up yeah, that's what it basically ended up. We could just yeah. play in straight acoustics. I so. can manipulate whatever, but I was just watching him the entire time, like. Where is his hands going? What is happening right yeah, now? Yeah, when we don't play our normal set, I kind of improvise a lot. I just kind of do my own thing. Yeah, sure. So he's just like, I, I don't know what the I, hell you're I, doing. I, am, I don't know what to do with my but hands. that's where uh, experience comes in play, right? Because yeah, you guys have been performing true, for a very, very long time. How long have you been performing together? Well, so he's kind of relatively new, like a couple years, right? Yeah. Like three, uh, since like four or five, 20, five years? Four yeah, years? So I think four years. Four years, maybe? Yeah. So how, like did, how did you come onto the onto the game? You just decided you needed more than a, a one-person thing? Or what? We were friends. Uh, we met in Nashville almost a decade ago. Oh, okay. And you we, both live in Nashville now? Because yeah. you're from Nashville. Yeah, yeah, I'm from California originally, but oh, I've been okay. in Nashville for about 11 years. Oh, okay. And, and so. same with me. I'm from California, and then uh, I've been in Nashville about 10 years. Sure. And I met this joker uh, at a bar, and we became fast friends and took trips together and did all this stuff never spoke a word of music didn't even work on music together for the no he six, we seven both produce yeah. artists in nashville as well so like oh, cool but like we just never ended up doing it was music just friends yeah like sure. friends and then um i i forget how it came about but he was like hey man uh do you want to do you want to come on tour yeah i was doing another full band tour it, it, it had been a second since i did a full band tour and i was putting together guys and i was like you know what i i, I had guys from like before in la and uh, you know relationships drift and shit happens but um i wanted to put it together like a a really cool like you know nashville hometown like team to go out and tour with and so you know he was definitely like a high on my my list and I asked him, and he was like, yeah. So and now I haven't just been left. Been doing the things. <laughs> well, once you have it going and it's, like, smooth, you have the teamwork, yeah. you, it's it's hard to want to walk away from that, right? Because yeah. when you have issues like this, you can count on them. Like, yeah. okay, well, you got my back. Like, True. no worries. Yeah. And I've also had, like, times where, uh, you know, there's, like, there have been, like, band members, you know, so, like, you go through, like, several different teams over right. time, you know, and, like, yeah. and I've had, like, you know groups on the bus that like kind of started to get toxic and i was like i don't like how this feels i don't like the interactions or it's like very like stale and it's like band versus artist and like that kind of thing and it just can it, it can get weird sometimes yeah. so i just wanted to like get my homies on the bus and right and like you know because that way kind of like it's a much safer bet that you're going to get along and and be on the same page so sure. and we had been on a bus a lot together yeah, the yeah. <laughs> and you guys were at the joint together yesterday we were at the joint Eau Claire, together, Wisconsin. Man. how was your experience here in eau claire man Amazing. uh so far so good like we've had it we've had a great time last night we drove in at like midnight like we we got in at the joint after that yeah we got in That's at it. midnight <laughs> and we were like okay well we got to go somewhere you know just to kind of wind down before we go to sleep so we went to like water street and uh and we found a few places we definitely didn't like, and then we found the joint, and we were like, "Okay, this this feels like home." <laughs> it was like, I mean, how can you beat uh, a four dollar and fifty cent double shot of Woodford Reserve? Yeah, like, no, I, I mean, it was it, it it was pretty pretty wild. Like, five dollar pitchers and dollar beers. Like yeah, the little ones are a dollar, and that's, that's not insane. a special. That's like the the regular. That's the regular rate. Yeah, yeah. And, just, and, you know, and everybody was like really kind yeah, and like yeah. good conversations. It was great. And, yeah. So it was it was definitely my type of place. So where are you guys headed after this? Is this a this isn't a one off, right? You're on some kind of tour or something? Uh well, no, yes and no. It's kind of <laughs> like that tomorrow. <laughs> uh so I just got back from Asia. I was in Asia for like 10 days. Oh, where? Uh played three shows in Indonesia. Cool. And I just got back on the 11th and now I have uh the show in Eau Claire today and then Tomorrow we're in Sioux Falls for another festival, yep. um, and then next weekend, Phase Fest? Phase Fest. Phase Fest. And then next weekend mm -hmm. we're in California for a uh, 
for another festival. I think that one's like with uh, the fray, the and fray, and hinder, and lit, and like some other of those bands. So I'm, yes. I'm actually really, really pumped because like so lit. Let's our friends from Nashville too. Like yeah, yeah, we yeah. <laughs> It's so always a good time yeah. <laughs> with them. They get lit. But, um, they get rowdy, and then yeah. after yeah. that, we basically leave directly from California to Asia again for like almost three weeks. Japan or where in Asia? Uh, I've been to Thailand and Japan. But. Thailand, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Philippines, and Indonesia. Where's your favorite place that you've gone so far internationally? Like if you had to go, let's say this, if you had to go live in another city internationally for a year, which would be the Ooh. one that sticks oh, out? Oh, that's, uh, I mean, I might, I, I could do Bali. I Bali? could definitely, I could definitely do Bali. And I have like some friends, like one of my buddies from back home, he was like kind of uh, was my part-time roommate in LA for, for a bit. Uh, he owns like three taco shops in Bali. Sick. And like, they're dope. They're so yeah. good. They're like incredible. And like, and he showed us like a really good time there. And, and I go there all the time. So like me and my wife have actually been thinking about buying like a, a place a there, like a villa out there. Cause wow. like you can get them for like relative, like really affordable. Yeah. And it's just so beautiful. Man, and I stayed in a so villa beautiful. in uh, uh, in Thailand in Koh Lanta, like oh, wow. in the jungle, but like not even a mile from the beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's you could how rent it, it for like three hundred dollars for the month. Yeah, dude. that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's wild. wild dude. Yeah. Well, I know you guys got to get on the road soon, so let me get you one more out of you. When yeah, you get, this is kind of the the question I usually ask everyone. So okay. the point of the show is I interview people pursuing careers based on their passions to inspire others to do the same. Okay. Wonderful. Because when you do something you're passionate about for a living, you get to have really unique experiences that are meaningful to you, that are rarely like financially driven, but it's like, well, if I didn't make money, I would still love to do this, and yeah. this is why. What's an experience that comes to mind like that for you? Uh, I mean, as far as like, I mean, like, Music has always been my passion, like from from the get go. Like I've, I grew up with music. My dad was a musician. My brothers went to Berkeley School of Music. Like I've been surrounded by music my whole life. And like, I guess uh, as far as like unique experiences that came out of this, I don't know. You answer. What the bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. He was he was about ready to say something. I was about ready to say something, but I want to hear what you have to say. No, I mean I. I I think he's about uh, to have one of his unique experiences. He's never been he's I, never been overseas like that, like to oh, tour. Cool. It's true. Yeah, I've never been to a, I've never been to any of the places that we're going. Yeah, but like doing this kind of tour, like when I do like U.S. tours and everything are incredible. Right. You uh, going going over to Europe is great. Uh, in Asia, like this is a thing. Like uh, my fan base there is unlike anything like in the world. And so I play for like massive crowds there, and I just, I've, I've never like felt that kind of like inclusion in my life before, and it's like overwhelming to the point that it's like, it like sets me back a bit, and so just getting to play shows like period with like people that are, actually wanting to hear what I have to say or sing. What was the last? Show? It was forty eight thousand people. Yeah, forty eight thousand people Whoa, in Surabaya. Bro, I mean <laughs> seriously, insane. it's why it's absolutely insane. It's like it's nuts there, and so so like yeah, I mean everything that I do like that just makes it worth it. Yeah, like, it's that's, crazy how the internet connects people in that kind of way. Oh yeah, you know um, this group phony people. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Mm. You need to hear phony people. Really? Oh my god, yeah. So they're a Brooklyn based group. Um, and they have a song with Megan Thee Stallion and like some other cool. big people, but they're like new age funk kind of. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's not like regular hip hop, and there is rapping and stuff to it, but it's like kind of funk music. I'm down but with that. I interviewed. I'm friends with a drummer. I interviewed him out there, and um, he was telling me that when they were out in South Korea, they had that same kind of thing. Where yeah. He's like, I had no idea we were huge in South Korea, but yeah. there, everyone where that's English wasn't even their first language. We're singing the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. No, I, that's uh, that, that's that, that's how it is, and it, it and it really is. Uh, it's just it's always surprising and like every time i go there i'm like well this is the time that it's going to be like a crowd no one's going to show up or something but it's like it like the crowds get bigger and bigger every time i go it's wild and i think you hit the nail on the head when you were uh essentially just talking about different walks of life like you know i mean it doesn't music just transcends everything right art does in general i mean it doesn't matter if you're like a brilliant painter like yourself uh, if you, you know, if you sing, if you play cook. jazz See, clarinet, if too. you cook, like, yeah, he's a wonderful, I, I, wonderful I, I cook. Love, like if I didn't play music, I'd, I'd be making food. But you right. communicate on everything other than language, right? So, yeah. and then when you go overseas, I would assume you hear people 
sing everything well, back I mean, in English. Well, I mean, the music has to be the communication because you know, like, I don't speak Indonesian. Well, but they, <laughs> they what I'm saying is they sing your sh shit back to you. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great. You know, and they don't even know English. It's just fun to be able to wow. do something and and have people appreciate it, man. Yeah, right. And like, and that's, I guess, the big goal. It's like, okay, sure, can you get, uh, you know, can you make something like that financially viable? Sure. But the most important thing is like, do people get something out of it? Yeah. Like that's extremely rewarding. Yeah, what kind of impact can you it's, leave? It's so it's yeah it's 100%. so it's so rewarding and and yeah and I just like glad like like 17 years later I'm still doing it. You know? Yeah, dude. <laughs> well, thank you so yep. much for sharing your talents with Eau Claire and oh, sitting with yeah. me. It was really dope getting to meet and hang out with you guys great and seeing you your show. It. Dude, you thank guys you very crushed much. it despite the problems you you yeah. think you had. You sounded great, dude. Thank Thanks. you very awesome. much, man. Thank you. Um, Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.